Hey guys, just checking in. I finished a book, so I wanted to film my thoughts really quickly. So I didn't vlog too much about this one, but this was the audiobook I just finished called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And this is a celebrity memoir. And I, I do enjoy them for the most part, but I'm really picky about which ones I pick. Now, I didn't know who Jeanette McCurdy was when I first heard of this book. Um, but I heard so many amazing reviews about it that I thought I would check it out. And then plus it's a really short book. So I think the audio was around six hours, a little over six hours. So yeah, and I got it and it's read by the actual author herself. So for those that don't know, Jeanette McCurdy is an actress or she was a former actress and her big role that made her famous was she was on the Nickelodeon show called I Carly here in the U S and um, the story basically talks about her life and um, talks about her really toxic relationship with her mother and how her mother really forced her into acting at the age of six and, and was trying to live through her. Her mother's dream was always to act and be an actress and Jeanette didn't necessarily want that, but she had such a strong desire to make her mom happy that she just kept going along with it even though she was miserable and uncomfortable. So the book goes on to talk about how she struggled with eating disorders, na most namely anorexia, which started at the age of 11, and bulimia, which she developed later on after her mom died. So the title itself, um, I've heard her say in an interview, she picked that title really just to grab people's attention. What I really, really liked about this memoir was that it was such a good combination of humor and like horribleness, I guess you could say. It was really, um, the subject matter was really hard to read. Um, if you have any sort of experience or sensitivity around eating disorders, I would say it's very hard to read. I personally do not, but I am a nurse and I do come across patients with eating disorders. So I'm kind of, I, I do read about that, especially anorexia, not as much bulimia, but it's always hard for me to read because I just, the mental illness that follows this, you it's so hard to break and it's so hard to help people in that situation, especially if they're not ready to be helped. But ultimately a few things that I just want to say real quickly. I really loved her writing. She has a really big talent as a writer and I hope that she pushes that and goes further with that. The voice narration was excellent. I mean, obviously she is an actress. She's been acting for a long time. So she did such a great job with the audio. Um, she was really great to listen to, to tell her story. And what I liked what she did is that it really, it starts, it's a chronological memoir. So we start from when she's really little, from her earliest memories and all the way up to the present time. I think she's maybe in her late twenties by now. So the show iCarly, I think that was popular in the early 2000s. So I was too old. I wasn't in that audience. So I never even knew about her while she was famous. I really like how the beginning is told with such an innocence. It, she really kept such a childlike voice to her experiences and her memories and kind of telling us what's going on. And you as an adult or older reader, you're seeing these red flags and you're seeing these horrible situations play out that her mother's putting her in and her mother's teaching her. And, but Jeanette, she's just, you know, she doesn't understand that that's not normal. That's not how your childhood is supposed to be. That's not how your mother's supposed to act. So I really love how she had that contrast between that innocence and really not even understanding that her mother was so abusive. And her mother was extremely narcissistic, um, she had her own mental health issues going on. She pushed anorexia and calorie counting on her, was so obsessed with like looking a certain way and being a certain weight and just very manipulative. Um, just as a mom myself with an 11 year old daughter, well, two daughters, 14 and 11, it was just so hard to just see how a child, how someone could do that to their child, how someone could put their kid through that and just be so selfish. And again, I understand her mother did, there's mental illness going on too. So it's not like she was, you know, I don't want to excuse her, but there were some issues, untreated issues that the mother just never had resolved. So that was really interesting. And then as Jeanette grows up and you know, I would say the first half of the book really focuses on before her mother died and the second half focuses on after her mother died. Maybe like three quarters of the book is before. I don't remember exactly. 
but you see the whole tone of the narrative change and how Jeanette is, she just becomes more angry. There's a lot of swearing in the second half, which I think some reviewers mentioned they didn't really like too much. Um, but it was really interesting. And just the amount of work that this person, this woman did to get better and to heal and to figure herself out was really just astonishing and really commendable and amazing. And it just, you know, it's, it's has a good, it's a good story. As tragic as it is, as hard as it to, as to read it as it is, it's a good story. It's a story about hope and healing and that through the help of mental health providers. And, but it was just, it was told in such an interesting way. Like I can see how this is a five-star book. I give, I'm giving it a five-star. I loved it. It was one of my most famous memoirs that I've read. I think my first famous First favorite is still Hunger by Roxanne Gay. That was amazing. But this one was a close second. And um, I just really think she did a great job. And she was so brave to put that out there. And I think that what I also really liked is that it's a memoir that's not just talking about all the wonderful things in her life. It's a memoir that I think she wrote to help other people. And one thing that I sometimes forget to realize is that there are a lot of people that have horrible relationships with their parents, especially women and their relationships with their mothers. Like this is not an unusual situation. And, and it really just shines a light on how children in this acting industry here in the, especially here in the U S there's not a lot of laws protecting them. And, you know, this focus on sexualizing young girls for the media and for television, it's so wrong and it's disgusting. And it also kind of makes me think about YouTube and how people, there are a lot of people that, in my opinion, exploit their children and put them on air and just use them as a way to make money for their family. And I just, you know, we all have our own opinions on that. It was a really great book. I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. But again, if you're really sensitive to abuse, this has all of the, all of the things in it. So just be careful with it. But, uh, you know, she does get very descriptive with her bulimia, which was hard to read. Um, some of it I, I did feel was a little bit exaggerated. I mean, she's describing like, I'm not going to get into it, but, um, you know, I've had kids that throw up and they don't get vomit in their hair and on their arms. So there was a little bit of, I think, shock value in there during the story. But besides that, just an incredible job. She did such a great job and I'm really excited to see what else she comes out with as a writer. And I hope that she continues to heal. I mean, she had such a great introspective look onto her, into herself and into her mental health and into her thought process. It was really amazing, you know, how she went from where she was to what she is now. So really enjoyed it. Just wanted to share my thoughts with you there. Um, 